So don't tell me you ain't got it or you can't do something Yeah, everybody's spitting but they ain't saying nothing I'm just trying to make a difference, give you something to think about I ain't worried about a status or some goddamn clout If you see me in the streets, don't be afraid to shout them But I'm out Yo, 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 yo What's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there, man? So We have yet another L, another super close L. The Bulls fall to the Pacers 105 to 107 on some really sucky play calling, if you ask me. But before I really just hop straight into it, let, let, me, let me structure this thing. All right, so I'm going to start off with what I felt like was the Bulls meltdown because, okay, to start... The Bulls came out, man, guns blazing. The Bulls in the first quarter were leading by like 18. Like at some point in the game, they were leading by 18 during that first quarter. But they ended the first quarter off with a 37 to 22 lead. That was the score at the end of the first quarter, right? Okay, come the second quarter. At halftime, it reversed. So the Bulls dropped 37 in the first, but get this, it literally flipped. The Bulls dropped 21 points in the second quarter and they allowed 38 points by the Pacers, which leaves the Bulls trailing by the half by two points. <laughs> like, come on, what I saw out of this team during that first quarter was legit great ball movement, great open shots, great hustle, great pretty much all around everything. I guess you could blame it a little bit on the Pacers not being into the game just yet because they started off really, really slow, but I really felt like it was due to the Bulls defense. They came out really hungry early on. They were switching, they were getting to their men. They were rebounding like crazy. That, that was actually a surprise for me. The Bulls were rebounding very nicely and there wasn't necessarily one player that had stu stood out beyond all of the others. I guess you could say Wendell Carter Jr. He had a really good first quarter he came out with a really nice offensive game i believe he scored nine of the bulls 17 17 points in the first quarter uh, early on so he came out really hot carrying over from his last game so wendell carter jr yes he definitely continued to pile it on offensively but like i said i really thought that the team like as a team the team like really just played very well but we move on to the second quarter right the Bulls just began to actually I thought that they came out in the second quarter and they had they continued with the momentum the team was playing at a very nice pace they were getting up good open shots and they were knocking them down I thought the pairing between Zach Levine and Antonio Blakeney out there they actually looked pretty good on the court together Antonio Blakeney was just super hot tonight Justin Holiday, he was knocking down open three-pointers how he should have. But there came a point when Fred put the bench in, right? And the bench actually did what they were supposed to do. Chandler Hutchinson looked good out there as well. Felicio was having himself a night just doing some of the intangibles. Like, he was grabbing some great boards. He was actually playing some defense. I saw him playing some pretty good defense and rebounding you know after a defense possession by him and you know he was a pretty decent force on the offensive end you know i should say as well so felicio did pretty well but that was pairing him with ryan archidiacono he looked really good coming off the bench in the first half as well but in that second quarter when we still had a fairly decent lead for whatever reason after Felicio had that breakaway dunk on the pass from Ryan Archie Diacono, yes, he went down to the other end of the floor and he got a foul. But I believe that was only his second foul. And Fred decided that it would be a good idea to sit Felicio and put Wendell Carter Jr. back in the game, who also had two fouls, who also is our better and starting center. And that allowed him to pick up a third early foul and what it also did was stop the chemistry the momentum flow 
between Felicio and Ryan Archidiacono. And it's, it wasn't just those two guys, but I felt like the, the bench unit, they just had a momentum that Fred Hoiberg kind of just snatched away once he sat Felicio down. And he also sat uh, Ryan Archidiacono down. And my thing with that is you got to ride the wave. You should have let those guys ride it out because as soon as that happened is when everything just went downhill. Like that's when the Pacers just started to go on the run. He threw when Carter Jr. back out there. He picked up another another foul. So then you throw, you try to throw Robin Lopez out there because I guess you felt like Felicio had too many fouls. Like what? And it just started to just mess up the the, the team's flow, man. And that I really felt like that was the cause of the Bulls losing that ginormous lead that they had. That was the cause of it, man. And it's Fred Hoiberg's just lack of management like he doesn't know how to manage momentum how to manage the time on the floor or anything like I, I really didn't like that play call by him I didn't like that call by him so if you ask me that's what killed the momentum but cool come the second half the Bulls started to pick it back up Antonio Blakeney he was out there having a crazy crazy shooting night he actually put up 22 points on three for five shooting from the three-point line you know and he actually shot well from the field as well shooting nine for 13. so Antonio Blakeney had himself a night especially especially in the fourth quarter he was actually the one that kept us in this game when we were down four and he hit that where he made that four point play that was super clutch but beyond that i just felt like this team could have pulled this game out the, the bulls actually could have won this game but you look at the play call that fred hoiberg drew up which another i can say the same for the last game the play call that Fred Hoiberg drew up was just boneheaded, if you ask me, because it was a Zach Levine mid-range jumper. Now, I'm starting to wonder if maybe Zach Levine is just doing his own thing, and that's not the play call that Fred drew up, because why would you draw up the exact same play that you did in the last game that had us lose? A Zach Levine mid-range jumper as opposed to finding an open shot to the basket or opening up, finding a way to open up a lane for Zach Levine to drive to the basket for a two or some free throws. And But before that, you look at the play call that the Indiana Pacers did to get the lead when, when the score was tied, right? Nate McMillan drew up a beautiful play where he had the ball swing from one entire end of the court all the way to the next. First, he let Victor Oladipo play a little bit of iso ball. He had uh, one of the players come off of a screen. Oladipo hits him at the top of the key. He pump fakes 4-3. He gets his he draws his man in. He hits Darren Collison in the corner for the three, which he was open for at first, but he pump fakes. And as Stacy said, if you read the scouting report, you know that Darren Collison does that move pretty much 90% of the time because he doesn't take threes very well. He's gonna hit that pump fake, he's gonna bait you, and he takes one dribble in, open for the mid-range jumper, and that's his shot. That's the shot that he loves. That was all executed. That was a play drawn up by Nate McMillan. But you look at us, and nothing of the sort. We take Hail Marys. We take Hail Marys for our game winners. And it's clearly just not going to cut it, man. Clearly. So I'm really sick of losing games like this. As I said in the last video, I really feel like this team has what it takes to be fairly decent. I think that we have what it takes to be a legitimate team in the league, especially the East. But we're just lacking in coaching because once Lori Marketing and those guys get back, I know that I'm preaching to the choir. We all know this, right? But if we're in games and we don't even have three of our key players, then we should definitely be in good shape once we get back. But by us not even having those guys and still being in these games shows me that we have enough. But where we're lacking clearly is in the X's and O's department. So. Fred, 
I don't know, brother. It, it, it's, it's not looking too good. You definitely get a thumbs down from me, man. Definitely get a thumbs down from me. But um, this is another game in the bag, another L in the bag. But we're going to move on to the next, man. I'm not going to make this video too long. So I express my thoughts about everything, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. But... I'm about to get out of here, man. Y'all get up with me on social media at Radical underscore creator. That's Twitter and Instagram. Oh, and y'all even check out the Facebook page, man. I got a Facebook page as well. You just go to facebook.com and type in Wise Black. You'll see the page pop up. Y'all connect with me on there as well. But I'm about to get out of here, man. Y'all holla. See you next time. Peace.